Oh, well, here we are, James. A long weekend in the big smoky. <laughs> oh, Gary, the Glasgow boys, done in Londonium. A wonderful wee place for a visit. You're not wrong. Here is the city, not just the bee's knees. Oh, the bee's knees and its wee stripy jumper, too. I just can't wait to take a donor down the dilly and have a butcher's all the wee urchins. <laughs> See the pearly king and queen all done up like an explosion in a button box? <laughs> oh, the Lambeth walkers, the salt of the earth, cockneys and the queen vic. Pie and mash, jelly deals, bubble and squelch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Gary, the tea's not the same when it's no made with the Glasgow water. I know you're right. Here, give a swatch at your swatch. How long is it since we left the dear green place? <gasps> Three hours and fifteen minutes. Oh, is that all? <laughs> I'm off of homesick. Oh, me and all. <laughs> Did you say you get a couple of quid for some tea? Oh, listen to that, James, the Glasgow twang. <laughs> Heavens, a jicky in absentia. Here, here's a skydiver, you absolutely delicious wee tramp. You keep the banter rolling. Oh, that's magic to your boys, man. I lost my train ticket last year, no, I never made it back up a road, but... Brilliant, Glasgow, I'm Glasgow. Magic. You're brilliant, man. Now on to lifestyle news interpreting for the Neds tonight, Brad McGlinchey. How you doing? A research report today confirmed that Scots have the most unhealthy diet in Europe due to a lack of healthy vegetables as part of their daily intake. So what you do is you just ask for two pickled onions with every fish supper, and it's a big deal. Good night. This, sir, is the Jeroboam in red, made from mahogany and, of course, velvet lined. Good, good. Have you given any consideration to handles at all, sir? Uh, no, I hadn't really thought about it. Well, the Jeroboam generally leaves here with a brass handle, but on this particular occasion, I'd like to suggest a silver handle. It would set it off handsomely. Is that going to add much to the cost? No, not considerably, no. If you decide to settle on the Jeroboam, uh, we could arrive at a special rate for the silver. And uh, does that include entrance to the phone party? Naturally. Magic! <laughs> What's that, Betty? Letters? Aye, letters, son. Kept them for the war. Oh, aye. This one's still sealed, look. You'll not believe this. That just came today. Was lost in the French post for 58 years. It's for my Charlie at the front, look. Here, son, you've got a good manly voice. See if I read my letter and you read Charlie's reply, it would be like we were having a conversation. Would you mind? Not at all, Betty. Right. <clears throat> my darling Charlie, it's only two weeks since you've been away, but it feels like a lifetime. The minutes are like hours, and the hours like days, and the night's black veil seems everlasting. Please write soon, as this heavy heart longs for your warm embrace. Oh, my love, Betty. Dear Betty, your dirty lion cow you. <laughs> Davy McAllister from Mary Lee Circus was posted here, and he tell me you're riding flat foot McNabb for the terrace. <laughs> I knew ye I fancied him, your trollop. I'm sitting here in a ditch with a rifle for company, and you and McNabb are banging one another rotten. <laughs> one thing's for sure, if God spares me, I won't spare you, ya boot. Mm. Charlie. Aye, that was me rumbled right enough, son. 
But it's luck when you have it. When Charlie came back for the body, he was dual alley anyway. So the doctor just helped me to imagine it, you know. And that was me free to get a plunge again. <laughs> Do you want to keep this? Nah, just bin it, son. <laughs> They would never have known. Well, of course, they would never have discovered it. I could see it, I could see it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. Oh, is that right, eh? Mm. Masturbating, eh? <laughs> I wonder if I'm right. an absolute classic. I know. I love The Wizard of Oz. Makes you feel all warm and Christmassy inside, eh? Aye, like that turkey dinner you offered up earlier on in the day, eh? <laughs> Seeing your trimmings at my last haircut, eh, George? <laughs> well, you managed to clean your plate. That's right, I did clean my plate, Linda, because at this time of year, my mind focuses on those less fortunate than ourselves, the sick and the needy. Those, for whatever reason, can't be with their loved ones. Guests of Her Majesty's prisons, or the insane, but not all as selfish as you, Linda. <laughs> Oh, here comes Judy Garvin. Mm -hmm. Here's the wee Doug. Guess we're not in Arkansas anymore, Toto. Can you belt up for a minute? <laughs> Arkansas? Have you saw this movie before? Aye. I don't think so. Arkansas. It's I guess we're not in Kansas, Tojo. <laughs> Toto, Harry. <laughs> eh? The Doug's name's Toto. Oh, aye. That's what it is, aye. Sorry about that, George. Satisfied? Yeah? Me apologising to George. That's George thinks I'm an idiot now, all because of you. In this festive season, I tried to bail you out to stop you looking like an idiot. What do you do? You switch it around and make me look like an idiot. Now George thinks I'm less of a man now. Thanks very much. All because I forgot Tojo's name. Toto, right? You happy now, Linda? Eh? That's me and George at each other's throats now. Oh, what an achievement, Linda. Well done. This list, your achievements, eh? You bought me a shirt that didn't fit me with crackers that didn't crack. George here got a mug that did crack. The turkey didn't have any stuffing in it. The mash was cold. The wine was warm. And now, George has missed the start of his programme, and we're left watching Smokey and the Bandit. Well, why didn't you just turn it back over? Because it's my house, that's why. I went and check the nameplate and see whose name's in the door. Eh, hey, it's my name. Go on, go and check it, Linda. I went and check the nameplate in the door. Go on. <laughs> go and have a look see whose name it is. Go on, Linda, go on. That was a bit much, was it? No, Harry. Yeah, well, you've got to be cruel to be kind, George. Get a cigar. Well, Linda? Well? You checked the nameplate, have they? George, George. <laughs> Linda! Well, who wears the trousers? Whose name's in the door? Well, I was going to look, but I got a bit distracted by the big set of golf clubs sitting out there on the porch. Oh, Linda. Well, that's... that's lovely. That's, that's, that's too much. They better be the ones I asked for. <laughs> Here are you, rotten people. Two for a pound. Two for a pound. Rotten paper. Rotten paper. Two for a pound. Two for a pound. Uh, Agnes, that's me. Done all the shopping. I've uh, got all the rotten paper. <laughs> Dad? Excuse Jeanette. There you go, Tommy. Wank. <sighs> Wank. Wank. <laughs> Good guy. <laughs> Mom, Dad, has he been yet? <laughs> Ding dong, merrily and high. It's that Yuletide season again here on QSC. And I don't know about you, but for me, that time of year means stuffing your gob with lovely, lovely tidbits. Don't forget this Christian's and watching Richard. And, of course, Richard. the birth of the baby Jesus in Bethlehem. That's the real reason for all the festivities, naturally. Of course it is. Covered like a pro. But it's also about presents. And what could be a nicer present for a loved one 
or even for yourself than this marvellous hamper. Just take a look at it. Absolutely jam-packed full of... Shit. Fabulously tasty goodies. Now, there's your shortbread there for a starter, all the way from Bonnie, Scotland, just right for that Hugman A party. And here is some mixed olives, straight from the groves of Italy to your Christmas table. And perfect for that figgy pudding, as the cow puts it, some figs in ginger wine. Eat a fig. Now, I remember when I was a boy, my old mother used to prepare the figs for Christmas. No one cares about your bloody mother, but Richard. Eat a fig. months before, you could smell them marinating away in the airing cupboard. Eat one. And trust me, these will taste just as good as my dear old mother's. Eat one. Now, let's see what else we have got in. Ooh, You're going to have to eat something, lovely. Richard. A huge jar of glacé cherries. Taste one. Shining redder than Rudolph's nose. Delish. Richard. No part of the banquet has been forgotten. For those cake bakers out there, how about a bumper tub of mixed peel? Next thing out you eat. And for those who like the Victorian Christmas, here's a jar of walnuts in vinegar. Next thing out you eat, Richard. Well, they've certainly been doing their thinking up there. You don't normally see this next one in a hamper, but here it is. A lovely can of vacuum-packed cream. No. Now, you won't have to go running about on Christmas morning for fresh cream. This little squirting beauty will sort you out. Perfect on top of Christmas pudding, jelly, or my personal favourite... Don't you dare! Well, there you go. Oh, well, there you go. Go to a break. Go to a break. <laughs> nervous for the last time at the house. Lindsay, there is no need to be nervous. We just got off on the wrong foot the last time. Everything will be fine, all right? <sighs> hey! Ah, David. There you are. Good to see you. Uh, we haven't ordered yet, so... Oh, that's big of you, eh? <laughs> Didn't realise this place was a restaurant. Looks like a crummy takeaway from outside. <laughs> well, the food's lovely. We came here for Lindsay's 18th, do you remember? Um, did you get the car parked all right, David? BMW. Sorry? Well, that's what you really want to know, isn't it? What kind of car I've got, eh? 1999 318i BMW. Private Reg DAV 106. Can we order now? No wonder. Two minutes I'm in the door and he's totally speeding me. Oh, good God. Laminated menus. Never trust a restaurant with laminated menus. Why is that? Good restaurants have the nice leather-bound ones, you know what I mean, Dad? Right, well, uh, see anything you fancy on the menu? Uh, wee starter. Oh, just a wee starter, eh? Around about the £1.20 mark. Don't want to go too crazy. <laughs> I can just see your face if I went for the prawns. <laughs> Gonna do that to you. You can order whatever you like, David. We're paying for this. Right. Oh. <laughs> I was wondering when that was going to get brought up, eh? <gasps> Who's going to pay? Get it in nice and early. That's very classy, isn't it? We'll get it, don't worry. We'll pick up the time. <laughs> Listen, David, uh, I think we're getting off on the wrong foot again. Um, you know, when Lindsay said she was going out with a nice fella, you know, remember we had you up to the house and... That's right, you had me up to the house for... Pff, what was it again? Oh, aye, right, a plate of trash. God knows what it was. <laughs> Gunk. <laughs> well, that's OK. Dad's going to fix it all by taking us all out for a nice swanky night at the uh, Ritz. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm going to have the prawns. 
Oh, I'll join you in the prawns. Woohoo! Prawn night. Right. Well, hang the expense. Now we've established that money's not a problem. Let's see what the top of the shop main course is. Ooh, sirloin steak and pepper sauce. I see your prawns and raise your steak. Right, well, that sounds great. Well, have a steak. So, what are we going to wash it down with, Daddy? Eh, uh, well, a uh, bottle of... Uh... <laughs> a bottle of wine? Surely not. We must be hitting the £30 mark now, eh? <laughs> what with them top-end prawns and those big old steaks? What are you going to do, get a second mortgage? <laughs> <laughs> no, not wine. Look at Marsh, she's nearly shot herself. <laughs> Right, where's the toilet in this toilet? Let me guess. Outside? It's, it's actually just through there. I mentioned I'll be getting this. <laughs> so, Helena, great game. Thank you, Frank. Bit sticky in the third, though. Yes, um, Martina is very strong on the return, and she did make me work for every point out there, but, you know, to play her is an honor, but to have won, it, it's marvelous. Uh, I guess uh, what the fans uh, would like to know is uh, how you're going to celebrate tonight. Well, um... Uh, i probably just have an early night uh, to regain my energy, maybe have a shower, nothing too much. Yes, but I expect the fans really want to know, you know, you're, you're coming out the shower, you're wet, you're not dried yourself properly, uh, droplets of water going down your perfect body, you walk over to the bed, you lie down, the sunshine coming in the window and highlighting your perfect physique, and then Shania Twain comes in, also naked, she crawls along the floor, <laughs> crawls onto the bed, starts licking and kissing all the way up your body, and right there, your perfect breast. She starts tonguing and exciting you <laughs> tonguing those nipples. And then she asks you, do you want me to squat and give you a golden shower? Are you telling it enough to get on a bike? Well, I always think that you can't say what you're going to do unless you're in this situation, so I don't really know. Thank you, Helena. <laughs> He would dominate by what he ate and force my tender nostrils to breathe what he's done. His idea of fun. Foul vapors blurt and hurt my eyes. Heart thumping, sphincter pumping. I'm in the middle of a chain reaction and still the gas man cometh. He has the wife runtery to follow through, skidding stainfully on white cotton. I'm in a love that's gone with the wind. He is Michael Flat, Yulant, Lord of the Pants. You're a whole six pounds lighter. Mm. Have you been eating fresh fruit? No, I just pawned a couple of my rings, man. <laughs> Captain, the wind's fair, hooring up, with this being bashed to bits in the slobbery slapper shallows. I will, steady as she goes. He's a round to the tip board. <laughs> ah, it's no use. We're being yanked off course. A massive suck tunnel is tonguing our head. Oh, come on. That's impossible. Ah, great barnacle helmet crabs. A fizzbox whirlpool. We're aiming for its chaps, eh, Captain? We're heading for a skittery grave. Calm yourself. Toss off a sweaty distress signal. Ripping off an eggy flare! Right, now pump the life raft! Aye, aye, sir! (laughs) 
529, please. Been out in the sun today? Uh. <laughs> Boss says you've up through in Edinburgh. Aye, that's right, aye. A couple of places. Well, eh, uh, low key places, you know. High Street, eh, uh, Doritos. Aye, well, you might have pulled the wool out of Boss's eyes, but me, I can smell you're a bit of a fresh fish. Thing is, you a lot of tough nuts in here. Give him an inch to walk over a tap you. But they don't walk over a tap of me. Nah, 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 nah. I just pull their trousers down and their pants down and I pump them <laughs> up again the wall. There's not many people like getting their ass blasted, I can tell you. You ever had to pump a guy? <laughs> no, I just, I just I would restrain him or throw him out. Nah, 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 nah. Then they come back with a heavy team. Once you've pumped a guy in the middle of a dance player, he'll never look at you in the eye again. Take last week, for instance, right? Got this Cockney geezer up for London, putting his weight about, upsetting the clientele. I goes up to him, I said, Hear you, get off my dance floor in ten seconds, or I'm going to shag you up the ass. <laughs> that guy thought I was bluffing. That guy got pumped. See my Wooly? Still get the bruises in the scars right today. Is that right, aye? Right, here's what we're going today. Testy, under stress, right? I'll make like I'm one of these undesirables, right? You sort me out. Pump me. No, no thanks, mate. No, 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 no. Here we go. No, I'm not leaving your club. Where are you going to do about it? I'm going to shag you. I don't believe you. I am a... I'm going to beast you. No, 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 no. Come here, look. Get off me, you dumber! <laughs> Poof! Oh, gosh, no nonsense, mate. Hello there. That's a lovely dress you're wearing. What's your name? Emily. Emily? That's a lovely name. Santa good to you, Emily. Did he get you that lovely dress you're wearing? No, it gives me a Barbie barbecue set and a bike. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> so is that you pals with Santa now, eh? Now that he got you all those lovely presents. <clears throat> See, Emily, the thing is, Santa doesn't exist. <laughs> He's not real. Your dad just made him up. See, you've no call being pals with Santa. <laughs> but I, on the other hand, have got this lovely individual fruit trifle. <laughs> I do exist. So, if I give you that, then you can be my pal. You can come round here and read comics and eat jubilees and maybe a wee individual cheesecake. And that's every day, by the way. Not just Christmas. What do you see? Hey, Emily. Come away from the psycho lady. <laughs> I'm the psycho, eh? I'm the psycho! Well, who is it that's filling their wee girl's head full of fantasies? There is no Santa! Do you hear me? Santa's not real! I'm real. And I'll still be here. Day after day after day. <laughs> Here, Jack, turn that down. It's a lot of rubbish at Hogmanay. Sure, a haggis bashing pish. <laughs> <laughs> a good new year to you, and no shite. Right. <laughs> Fruit, Betty? No, oh, aye, oh, thank you. Look at that, eh? Uh, I know it's, uh, it's hard to believe, but see, during the war, son, a, a banana was a magical thing. You know, we very rarely go to see one unless it was maybe Christmas or a special occasion. Uh, used to get all excited about the thought of it, and, and when I held it in my hands, oh, wonderful. I bet it tasted even better. 
Oh, you didn't hate them, son. That's enough. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Come here, you, my wee bastard. You can't even go to school like that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. There you are, darling. See ya. Cheerio. Oh, you look beautiful, don't you, man? <laughs> Hi, Mum, it's me. That's me. I'm just about to have my Christmas dinner now, aye. I've been up all night cooking. Turkey, potatoes, carrots, sprouts. They wee uh, sausages wrapped in bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Pricks and blankets, Terry Cods. <laughs> it's a pure scheme. You should be on the telly or something. Ah, well, I'm not having any at my cell, no, because, well, Derek says it's, it's a pure shame, right, that we've got all that good food and there's folk in Iraq that have only got grass and mud to eat and homeless people that haven't got any at all. So Derek just put all the food into the dog's basket and he's took it down to the refuge for homeless folks' Christmas dinner. Ah, he's dead thoughtful that way. Well, the homeless folk are having their Christmas dinner this year at Chapman's, which is dead handy, cos that's Derek's local. <laughs> ah, he's organised it all. Ah, oh, he's done the homeless folk proud, Mum. Cos, um, well, he took the telly down for a start, because homeless people don't have tellies, do they? Unless they sleep outside Dixon's a lot. <laughs> so Andy's organised all the entertainment for them. Aye, he's got them a magician, and uh, it's a lady magician. Aye, see, Derek's right into women's lip. He says she's brilliant. She, uh, she puts out flowers and rabbits and ping-pong balls and all sorts of things, aye. No, no, she's no got a heart. No, Derek says that um, she pulls them out the, the wizard's sleeve. Sports socks. Air your sports socks. Two for a pound. Two for a pound. Much. <laughs> for a pound, hen. Bit pricey, Anna. Well, uh, I could uh, do you credit. What kind of credit? Well, you know, easy repayment, zero percent interest. Keep talking. <clears throat> right, say you put down a deposit of uh, 50 pence, I'd give you a pair of sports socks as a sort of goodwill gesture. Eh? And uh, then all that remains is one easy payment of 50 pence and you've secured a second pair of sports socks. That sounds all right, I'll take a pair. Ah, 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 ah. Calm the beans in. Got to run a credit check. <laughs> Please to inform you, you've passed your credit check. There's your sports socks. Cheers. Good day. Sports socks! Sports socks! Yeah, are your sports socks! Two for a pound! Yeah. Two for a pound! Do you think we should leave away in here like that? It's not a very good area, is it? No, oh, you're right. Better safe than sorry, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, how long have you been camped out here, then? Um, about 36 hours. Uh, only got two hours to go. So you're hoping to pick up a couple of bargains, eh? Eh? <laughs> Chug all that pussy crack! Man the soggy dabber crosser! Captain! Happy New Year! Oh, would you look at that! A bottle of the finest Willy Wuthering whiskey from the scrotal shores of Shagba Jones Bay. <laughs> oh. A few drops of that, Captain, and you'll be dancing the dances of old, like the jolly felch pipe. Or oh, the merry button flop. <laughs> of the sleazy teasy wackery. <laughs> right, blow it. Drop the knob on the anchor and let's toast it with a wee drop. Sound the pushy down hard for the new year, boy. <laughs> hey! Hey! 